Science Viking here, and it's time to continue our Let's Play of Final Fantasy IX. Well, we've reached Bermesia. Let's see how things are doing here. I imagine they're going poorly. So, this is Freya's home. What are you doing? Get over here. How, how sensitive of you, Zidane. It's been five years. I've been away for so long. Not a night went by when I didn't dream about home. I can't believe I'm here. I am no longer the selfish child I was five years ago. The time has come to serve my kingdom as a Bermesian Dragon Knight once again. I'll do what I can to help. Me too. I help too. Let's go. We are in Bermesia, the realm of eternal rain. What can I do for my kingdom? This is not the time. And yeah, clearly the Alexandrian army with their black mages arrived earlier, and it's pretty bad. However, if we look behind this cart, we ha find that we have cancer! Yay! Actually, cancer is another one of those stalaza. In this case, cancer headed to the cape where Virgo waited. The sun was setting into the ocean. Would he finally see her? And we have to find the other stalaza to continue the story. Now, before we proceed, I'm going to quick cure Zidane's blindness. In case I haven't mentioned this yet, blindness reduces a character's physical attack accuracy severely. And seeing as Zidane's primary means of dealing damage, and really his primary role in combat is physically attacking, we want him to have high physical attack accuracy. Ah, new enemy type. Magic Vice. The Magic Vice is an improved version of the Vice enemy that we were seeing back in the village of Dali and in the on the road while we're on our way here. They have some magic abilities. And, you see they use that ability Magic Hammer, which damages the target's MP. Quinna can learn that ability. In addition, just like the vice enemy from the village of Dolly, they can steal from us. The difference is, they have the ability Mug, which in addition to stealing, also inflicts damage. Let's see if we can get Quinna to learn Magic Hammer. Nope, apparently not. Well, that one's dead. The biggest issue with trying to um, learn abilities from these enemies is that they can run away. If their health gets too low on their turn, they'll just escape. Come on, Quina. Yes! We learned Magic Hammer. If you get a Magic Vice's HP too low, they will run away from the fight, and that prevents you from eating them. The issue is, if their health is low enough for you to eat them, their health is probably low enough for them to run away. So it can actually be very frustrating trying to learn Magic Hammer. Anyway, Quinna is going to level up shortly, so... Let's see, Steepled Hat boosting Quinna's strength. Because Quinna will always have the High Tide ability, and because Quinna's uh, Trance ability isn't very useful anyway, strength is more useful than Spirit for Quinna. I am still moving over to the leather armlet since that increases spirit at no cost. Cotton robe is still definitely the right move. As is the glass buckle. And well, let's see if Zidane can learn any new abilities. Let's switch Zidane over to the feather hat, which teaches him bright eyes and add status. We already know what adds to and then the glass armlet for steel gill. We already know what add status does. Bright eyes grants immunity to the blindness status effect. So let's actually equip that now. I'm not entirely on steel gill. I'm not entirely sure if, um... Yeah, Bandit is already equipped. If any enemies in this area can inflict blindness, but I figure, why not have that ability equipped? And, we can interact with the corpses, but all it does is confirms that the corpses... Also, 
Um, I'm gonna go on a bit of a tangent. Ah, an Ironite. We might actually be able to learn, um... The ability that they teach. Lancer, and then Eat. And then if that doesn't work, I'll have to use Blizzard. I don't want to use Blizzard on them because I tried using it in a previous take and it just one shot at the Iron Knight. So it could be very useful for, um... Okay, you know, can't eat until a week. Well, if it survives Blizzard, we'll try again. I tried using... In a previous take, I tried using... Blizzara on the Ironite, and it just killed it in one shot. And there goes Zidane. Oh, I can have Freya revive him. I guess it's a good thing I bought some Phoenix Downs. Learned Angel Snack. Now, we already saw what Magic Hammer does. It damages the target's MP. Angel Snack uses a remedy on each member of the party. The remedy item cures all status effects. So, in effect, Angel Snack cures all status effects on all party members. However, it actually does consume four remedies to do it. It, isn't, it doesn't have the effect of a remedy, it's actually using the item. It can still be very useful against enemies that like to use status effects on the whole party. I think it also qualifies as Quinna's first uh, support ability. And if we go through here... Here, more death and destruction, and it's our old friends Zorn and Thorn. It is them again. Most persistent they are. Black mages. Kill. And we're fighting more black mages. They're still Type A black. They don't really have anything valuable to steal, and we can't eat them, so we may as well just kill them immediately. There's no real reason to hold back for once. And I accidentally made VV physically attack because I thought I was controlling Quinna, and he took it out in one hit. Well, he got a critical and Zidane had already weakened it. Still, the Black Mage doing meaningful damage with a physical attack is not very common. And Quinna, despite technically being a magic character, still has that unbelievably high physical attack power. And it looks like VV will level up soon. The general will punish you for this. Yes, very scary it is when the general gets mad. Well, we'll deal with your general later. And now is actually a good time for a bit of a tangent. On the original PlayStation version of this game, the uh, game was released on four discs, because they couldn't fit everything onto one disc. So, the this meant that at certain points throughout the game, you would have to transition to the next disc. And there's always a chance when you're changing discs while the game is running that it will crash. And so... The, because of this, they give you the opportunity to save from the menu before changing discs. So far, so relatively boring. However, one significant aspect, one significant consequence of this is they actually kind of leaned into this limitation of the technology. And so they wrote the story to kind of fall into four fairly long segments. And so you start off at a relatively low level of tension, and gradually build up. The tension gradually rises as events happen throughout the disc until a major climax happens that kind of sweeps all the pieces off of the table and then when you restart with the next disc, it's at a much lower level of tension, often in a different area or even following a different group of people and then you gradually build the tension back up, getting used to this new status quo that has been changed by the events of the previous disc's climax. So, because of this, the ending of the, um... The ending of each disc is actually a really good place to just kind of take a break for a little while. It's sort of a cliffhanger, but it also really is the natural conclusion. And this also leads to my biggest disappointment with the Steam version of this game which is that they removed the save screens between discs. 
which is an issue because often you actually have to go a decent ways into the game to get to the next natural save point because the game was designed based on the assumption that you could save at the end of each disc. Now there's no combat between you and your first save point usually, or very little. So there's not a real danger of getting a game over and having to repeat the end of the previous disc. More, you've reached the natural end point and you have to continue and you should be able to take a break, but instead you're required to continue. It's like if an episode of a TV... After the end of one episode of a TV show, you have to watch the first five minutes of the next episode before you can stop. It just kind of breaks the flow. And so because of that, we're nearing the end of what was disc one. And when I reach the end of a disc, I will actually end the video there, even though there isn't really a save point just because it would really break the flow to continue. And now we're encountering Basilisks. True to their name, these enemies have the ability to inflict petrification. This is the reason why I wanted to start, and that's the ability that does it. This ability, that counter, will gradually count down. When it reaches zero, Zidane will be petrified. That's the reason why I stocked up on the soft item. Now, we're not in a huge amount of danger. We should be able to finish them off before the time runs out but it's always good to have the ability to cure the status effect just in case. Later on, we'll encounter enemies with the ability Death Sentence. That causes a character's... A, that causes um, a counter that when that counter reaches zero, the character just dies. And there's no way to get rid of the status effect other than waiting for the character to die and then reviving. 125 experience points, Phoebe leveled up, and Freya will level up next. I'll keep the Magus out for now. Better magic defense is always good. Now let's see about Freya's equipment. Iron Helm is the best we can get. So are the Mithril Gloves. So is the Linen Curus. And so are the Germinos boots. Freya, it happens that the best equipment for her to level up is also the best equipment for her to gain abilities. Now, on the other side of this chasm is where Zorn and Thorn were which is where we need to go. But we can't actually get there yet because the balcony has been destroyed. So let's try going the other way. Let's run up here for a moment. Pass more corpses. I'm honestly a little surprised this game managed to get by with a T rating rather than an M rating. I mean, sure, there's no blood and gore, but there's really a lot of death and some really messed up things happen over the course of this game that, I guess because it's not, like, really gory, it is apparently okay. It's just really strange. This is really the first example, I'd say. This area is the first example of something really seriously messed up happening on screen. And in this case... Also, we've encountered a new enemy type, a Mimic. You'll notice I ran up to a treasure chest, and the chest came to life and decided to attack me. Now, this isn't Dark Souls, so the Mimics don't get, like, a free hit on you when you try to open them. And the Vice stole a potion. Lovely. Instead, walking up to the chest just triggers a battle with it. Of course, also, unlike the Mimics in Dark Souls, these Mimics don't actually contain anything valuable that you get for killing them. They do, however, have the ability to summon those Magic Vice enemies. And they can summon an infinite number of them, so you have to kill the Mimic first. In order to win the fight, otherwise it will just keep summoning more and more and more. Okay, now Quinna's gonna level up. We did get an Aether, though. Actually, Quinna, I'd say, already is equipped to level up. Fine by me. Ah, a, do a large door with a bell on it. I think we know what that means. Now, if you look closely, you can see at the end of this balcony is a chest. However, if you run across it, the balcony will fall down. Instead, we walk across it, and we receive Germinos boots. Not the most important treasure, but now we walk back, and the balcony falls down. And now we've made a bridge. If you run across going towards the chest, that will trigger it to fall immediately, and you will miss out on that chest with its admittedly not particularly impressive loot. 
but still it's worth being mindful of. But, since we dropped that balcony down, now we can get across on the other side. So we run over here. And investigate this chest, which I'm sure is perfectly... Oh, it's a mimic! Admittedly, mimics are good experience fodder. Though there isn't even anything really valuable to steal from. They're just another enemy. Though it also bears remembering... Kind of a disappointment I have with this area. Um... So it's separated into inside and outside, and outside you can encounter Ironites, you can encounter magic vices, I believe the Black Mages also appear in random encounters. Inside, the only enemies that can appear in random encounters are those Basilisks that we can fight. Sure, you can fight Mimics, but they're not part of a random encounter. The issue with this is, the majority of Burmesia, you'll be inside you won't be outside where there's the more varied random encounters. That's only a small part of the area that you have to go through. So, the majority of the time, you'll be fighting the much more boring random encounter option. It feels like they really should have reversed that, and had a few enemy types that can appear in random encounters outside, and then a larger variety of enemies that can appear in random encounters inside. Instead, they did the, they kind of did it backwards. Alright, Zidane's ready to level up. And I am going to restore Phoebe's MP. We have plenty of lasers. Overall, this is still a very effective area, though. More dead people. And we go out to the balcony. And we jump across. And let's talk to this guy. He's still moving, so he's not dead yet. Ah. Get the bell, by the bed, and go to the palace. Protect the king, please. And now he is dead. But, if we go over to here, now that he's told us about it, we can fight a random encounter. Yeah, more basilisks. I mean, they're not a bad enemy. They have a decent variety of ways that they can attack you. They even have a status effect associated with them. It's just... There's nothing special about them to warrant them being the vast majority of what you fight against in this area. And they do appear to be weak against ice, though, which means they're probably Dragon-type enemies. Since I can think of no other reason why they would be weak against ice except possibly the dragon type. And Zidane is leveled up, so let's quick change his equipment back. And yeah, Man Eater will be very useful. So, he told us to check by the bed, but we don't see anything by the bed, however, if we check under the bed, we find the protection bell. We know what that means, we take it back to the bell, the door with the bell over it, and we can get into the palace. Not really a puzzle so much as just kind of an exploration challenge. You have to go to pretty much every part of this area to find all the pieces you need to get through. But there's not really much of a puzzle associated with it. Of course, it does give plenty of opportunity for combat, and it fills out this part of the game a bit. Alright, through here. And we ring the protection bell. The bell in your hand and the doorbell are ringing. The bell in your hand shatters. Zidane, Hermesia's royal palace is beyond these steps. It must be in ruins, just like everything else. I can't bear to see it like that. I understand, but we can't go back now. We have to find out who's behind this. I want to find out who these guys were, 
And why I look like them. Look, Vivi's scared too, but we have to face reality. Come on, Freya. It'll be okay. Vivi. Do you really know what you're doing? The answer you seek may forever change your life for the worse. Um... Yeah, but... But I have to. I have to find out who I am. I'm scared. What if I'm not even human? Vivi. What you talking about? I not human, but you definitely human. Someone's coming. Who are you? Are you in league with the Black Mages? No. You're lying! There's a Black Mage right behind you! No, I didn't do anything! I would never hurt anyone! Lies. He's telling the truth. Freya? It's good to see you, Dan. Damn, I haven't seen you in years. Where have you been? Actually, this isn't the best time to talk. We've got to get out of here fast. There are black mages swarming all over this place. What are you waiting for? Where is the king? I don't know. Didn't see him in the palace. Well, I'm going. I've got my own family to worry about. Freya, forget about the king and get out of here. We're no match for these black mages. I will protect my home and my king at any cost. Let us go into the palace. And if we go through here... Come on, dear. We have to go now. I can't move anymore. Go on without me. No, I can't do that. Remember that promise we made each other in front of Master Gizamaluk. How could I forget? My only wish now is for you and our child to survive. Please bear a healthy child, darling. Raise him to be strong. Oh, Cal. It's too dangerous to stay here. You have to escape to Lindblom. I'm sure Regent Sid will protect you. My husband! He was hurt by those black mages. He can't move. How can we possibly escape to Lindblom? Look out! Whew, that was close. Jeez, thanks. Thank you. Wait, Cal, are you alright? Yeah, we survived somehow. Can you give me a hand? Sure. Thanks again, pal. Maybe I'll see you again in Lindblom. By then, my kids will be born. You definitely have to come and see them. Yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Take care. Well, I guess we have at least a little bit of optimism, optimism in the midst of all this destruction. If we look through here, there's really nothing significant. But if we go across this way, this statue was upright, but when the big statue inside fell down, the vibrations knocked this one over, so we can get over to here. And in here, there's more loot. Phoenix down. To replace the one we used, I suppose. And a tent. And if we run around here to this chest that's hard to reach and must be valuable, it's another mimic! Just what I always wanted. Well, same tactics as always. Yep, whale on the mimic. Well, even if Freya used jump, she probably won't have time to land before the fight's over. I don't believe the mimic dying induces the magic vice to want to run away. I think their whether or not they run away is still determined entirely by their health. Also, while Mug can be frustrating, I'm fairly certain that it is heavily biased towards stealing common items. I don't recall it ever stealing anything especially valuable. But they will get a lot of your potions and stuff. Alright. Nobody 
nobody leveled up, and since mimics are the most, the highest experience granting fights in this area, and that was the last one, we don't need to worry about VV leveling up just yet. However, if we go through here, is there anything here we can use? This spear. It's pretty light and easy to use. We received the Mithril Spear. Alright, let's go beat up some black mages. Come on, you know I don't mean you. I know. But... Never mind. Vivi. And we have Freya's second weapon, the Mithril Spear. We replace the Javelin with the Mithril Spear, it does a bit more damage, and it teaches her the ability Raise Wind. Yeah, that's good. Which I will demo in our next actual fight. It's quite useful. And if we hadn't had Freya win the Festival of the Hunt, that would be Freya's first active ability. Now, before we talk to this Moogle, Let's open this chest. And we receive the Lightning Staff. Well, look who we have here. Hey, buddy. You want to buy something? So if we hadn't succeeded in stealing the Ice Staff from Gizmo Luke, and it's really a toss-up whether or not you succeed at doing that, now is when we would be getting our first second-tier spell in the form of Thunder. And this staff also teaches Poison, which... You might be surprised to learn this, but the poison spell causes the poison status effect, which causes the victim's health to just gradually drain away. And still it's going to sell, willing to sell us a soft, high potion, and ether for 333 gil total. Sounds like a deal to me. Thanks, this will keep me going for another week or so. Impre you're impressively efficient with money. One night in a normal inn is 100 gil, so if you live a week on three about 300, that's actually quite impressive. And Atla has a new mo uh, Moogle option, a Mog Shop. We'll see these throughout the game, where they want us to have access to a shop, but they can't justify a normal NPC being in that area, so there will be a Moogle who sells things. In this case, some, most of what she sells is equipment, but we also have others. Also, can buy usable items: steepled hat, headgear, magus hats. Let's buy a couple more of those. They provide better magic defense. The barbut is good, and in fact, we want two of them: one for Freya and one for Steiner. Remember our quantum tunneling inventory system. The bronze vest, we really actually. I was gonna say we really only need one of. We could benefit from having two. Then Curus, and then usable items, which we are perfectly supplied for all of. Let's see if you have any letters. I have a favor to ask, Kubo. I want you to deliver a letter to Monev. Alright, so now we have two letters that we're carrying. I am going to use a tent, but I'm not actually going to save. If you're playing through the game normally, I recommend saving, because the upcoming fight can be pretty tough if you're not prepared for it, but honestly, I'm pretty confident. However, we got some new equipment. Switching Zidane off of the leather plate to the bronze vest gives him more spirit, more defense, and the jelly ability. Jelly grants a character immun immunity to petrification. And I also realized I forgot to check out the Magus hat. Which I'm actually going to... Nah, there isn't very much ma- the boss we're about to fight doesn't use very much magic. I don't really- I think having him have the, the abilities granted by the feather hat is better. However, I'm giving Quinna a Magus hat. And a glass armlet, because Quinna isn't particularly close to leveling up. And I'm going to switch Quinna to one of my Germinos boots, because Quinna is not close to leveling up, has already learned the abilities from the glass buckle, and I want the glass buckle to be able to go to someone else. And... Let's see, as you've already mastered this, the Barbet gives better stats and also teaches Dragon Killer, so she doesn't have to give up Dragon Killer to equip the uh, Mithril Spear. And actually, I think we're done fighting dragon enemies for a while. Actually, I may as well equip these two abilities since I have nothing else to do with those points. Except for Bright Eyes. 
All right. Onward. Oh, almost. First, I want to. I heard he did use a tent. Where's my head at? Onward. We are actually nearly at the end of this area, and correspondingly, nearly at the end of disc one. Jeez, this is terrible. Freya, I'm sorry, but from the looks of this, I don't think the king made it. And Freya clearly wants to be left alone. Vivi, let's go see what's over there. Freya? And she just leaps to the top of the statue. There's someone inside the palace. What are you waiting for? Get up here. Make it sound so easy. I guess I'll start here. And Zidane, come on. Now he beckons to Vivi to climb up. And as we kind of all predicted, Vivi is not going to be able to make that jump. I'm going to go on ahead, try to find a way up here. I'll meet you at the top. I meet you after I eat food inside Palace. And Zidane has his own way of making up, just one step at a time, to follow Freya. And there's a convenient gap in these statues for the two of them to look through. I knew she was behind all this. What do you mean, you knew? I decided to return to Bermesia because I heard rumors that Brawny had set her sights on our kingdom. Then that girl standing next to her must be Alexandria's general. Beatrix. That's Beatrix? The cold-blooded knight who knows no mercy. Beatrix. Beatrix? Yes, Beatrix. I hear there are many fierce warriors out in the world, some more powerful than even I. Beatrix of Alexandria in particular. They say her swordsmanship is the best in the land. Sir Fratley, do you insist on going on your journey? Yes. Please understand, Freya. Right now, Bermesia is at peace, while other nations are slowly but surely gaining power. I don't know if my spear alone is enough to protect Bermesia. Which is precisely why I must go out into the world. Sir Fratley, I don't think I can live on my own. Not without you. Freya... You're going to be free. Trust your strength, and have faith in your destiny. Once I complete my journey around the world, I will return to Bermesia. Then promise me, one more time, that you will return. I promise. Fratley. You never came back. You've left me with nothing except rumors of your death. I couldn't believe it. I still won't believe it. Never. Not until I witness proof of your death with my own eyes. I will travel across the world forever if I must. Are you alright? Yes. I was just thinking about the past. You still can't get over him, huh? Who is that? And a new player enters the scene. I find this rain quite pleasant. It feels as though the raindrops are blessing our victory. This is a great victory for us, Kuja. Your black mages made this conquest so simple. My only concern now is finding the King of Bermesia. We must take care of him once and for all, and prevent these rats from ever rising up again. Beatrix, what's taking so long? I don't know, Your Majesty. I've ordered Zorn and Thorn to search the perimeter, but there's been no word so far. I will join them and lead the search right away. You're wasting your time. What? Rats often look for new homes when they sense an earthquake. They've probably moved to the Sandy Treehouse by now. So you see, it's too late. The King has already turned tail and fled. Sandy Treehouse. Surely you don't mean Clara. It would be quite difficult if they escaped to Clara. Clara. 
Unless we can get through that sandstorm, it will be impossible to attack them. Sneaky little rats. Kuja, what do you think? Surely with your powers, there must be something you can do. Of course, Your Majesty. I will present a marvelous display of my power. I am certain that you will be most pleased. I was wondering if you would gather your troops near Clara. I am certain those filthy rats will retaliate in full force, and my black mages may not be enough. Sounds like we got trouble. That sinister man. Who is he? Beats me. I've never seen him before. Well, it sounds like they're going to Clara. I've always wondered why people call it the City of Illusion. I don't know. I'm... Uh, Clara has remained in isolation for hundreds of years. If my people escape to there, they'll be safe, at least for a while. What's this place like? The people of Clara are originally from Bermesia. Long ago, they severed ties with Bermesia over a trivial conflict. Now, the kingdom is at peace, shielded by a large sandstorm. Look, there's someone else coming. What is he thinking? Bermesia will never fall. Prepare to die. You wish to fight me? Beatrix of Alexandria? Be Beatrix? I commend your courage, but I will show you no mercy. And Zidane and Freya drop in. Hold it. You will have to deal with us first. We'll take care of this. Go find the king. Protect him with your life. Thank you, Freya. Ha ha ha. I've never been so humiliated in my life. I once killed a hundred knights single-handedly. To me, you two are nothing more than insects. Well, I hate to break this to you, Beatrix, but there are actually four of us, and that's really gonna make the difference. Beatrix is powerful. She really does live up to her reputation. However, we have a great opportunity to demonstrate Freya's new ability, Raise Wind. It is the first healing ability that this party has accessed. And Quinna still does not have enough MP to use Mighty Guard. Frog Drop would do trivial damage. Yeah, there's really not much reason to have Quinna do anything other than physically attack. Now, what does Raise Wind do? It grants the Regen status effect to the entire party. Regen is basically anti-poison. It causes everyone to regain health a few points per second, basically. And I just used it twice when I meant to use Lancer. Um... Oops. Anyway, it is actually one of the better healing abilities in the game, and also it means that this team finally has access to a healing ability. And, Quinna's Needle Fork has decided to show off its highly variable damage output. And let's use the ability we should have been using from the beginning, Lancer. Ah, Chain Plate, new equipment. So far, Beatrix is being very accommodating. I mean, you saw how much damage her regular attack did, but she hasn't really been using any of her scarier abilities. In fact, because she has some valuable stuff to steal, I'm gonna give Zidane another turn to steal from her before I hit her. Okay, Thunder Slash. That's a bit more dangerous of an ability. Still fully survivable, though. And Blizzara is showing its stuff. Ah, shock. I know I was shocked the first time I saw that. In fact, true story, I guess I didn't notice the damage numbers. It wasn't until, like, my second or third playthrough of the game that I realized that shock is not an instant kill. It just did so much damage that I never noticed that, that it technically does damage because it would always one-shot whoever she used it on. 
And as you see, after the fight progresses a certain distance, or after you inflict a certain amount of damage, Beatrix will essentially get bored and just one-shot everyone, because she was holding back the entire time. That's how strong she is. How ridiculously weak. Isn't there anyone who is worthy of facing me? Come, Beatrix. We must prepare to attack Clara. Yes, Your Majesty. And that just leaves Kuja to look over us. Now, what do we have here? Another filthy rat, and... Hmm... This boy could become a problem. And... Now we have the traditional end-of-disc cinematic. Every disc, every original disc of this game ends with one of these, after a boss fight. Because they want the end of each disc to be good and memorable. Silver Dragon. It's like the sports car of dragons, because he really likes to show off. And we'll be seeing more of him. Anyway, as promised, that is going to be the end for this part. And we'll pick up with these two guys and whoever we'll be following next week, the next time on the next video. So, thank you all for watching. As usual, I love you all, and I will see you next time.